Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I, I was everyone's weekend. <laughs> it's another season again. Jesus, Lord help us. Mighty God. We're going to be dealing with something today unique in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, before then, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm. Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor. Power and might belong to the God. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor. Power and might belong to our God. Forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Breath of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this dusty of my soul. Breath of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Please, I want you to make these declarations loud and clear. Hallelujah. Shout this loud and clear. Say, my father, my father, my father. Say this after me. Say, every spell issued against my life. To divert my attention. To divert my focus. As I pray, let the spirit break by fire. Reke de baraka ta baraka de bakata baya. Liban de lebos. Zude bede rebe bia baradia. Magada baraba bia. Irreke de rebe be rebe be kapa. Liban de rebe be rebe bia baradia. Zade bada rebe be rebe be kapa ya. Manko dom montoli be bia barandia. Reke de rebe be rebe be kapa rebe bia. Shada braba be rebe be kapa bandori be bia. Elake de rebe be rebe be kapa rebe bia. Irreke de rebe be rebe be kapa rebe bia. Reke de rebe be rebe be kapa rebe bia rebe bia. I say die by fire. Liban to rababa kabaya regada rababa kabaraba kabaraba bia labrada rababa rababa kabandor bia thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus in jesus name hallelujah i want i want you to right now wherever you are i want you to lift up your shoes hallelujah lift up your shoes hallelujah the shoe that you have just one shoe, just one of it. 
Say, my father, my father, my father. Every problem and delay over my life and my destiny as a result of a curse placed over my shoes. Expire by fire. Every curse in curse Every cause that was issued against my life, issued against my shoes, I break it by fire. I break it by fire. Every satanic oppression, every satanic manipulation, I break it by the blood. I break it by fire. I break it by fire. I break it by fire. Rebebia, <laughs> Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Loud and clear. I want you to lift your voice and I want you to shout this loud and clear. Every satanic bewitchment over my feet, I break it by fire. Every satanic bewitchment over my feet, I break it by fire. Every Every witchcraft against my feet, I break it by the blood. I break it by fire. I break it by the fire. I break it by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Every chain of backwardness and delay every chain of backwardness and delay binding my feet from progress Break by fire! Regadere bebe gebe rebe bia baradia. 
Every chain, he brand the rebellia. Break by fire, break by fire, break by fire. Every chains of delay, every chains of backwardness. Every chains of backwardness. I break it by fire. I break it by fire. I break it by fire. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rabba Barabia Baradis. Zila Bandelebia Baradias. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ele Bandelebia Baradis. Rondo Robo Zabayas. Ele Bandelebia Baradis. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Every wicked power. programmed against my feet to pull me to wrong places to pull me to bondages it is your feet that you are led you are directed by God through your feet it is your feet that speaks of establishment it is your feet that gives you authority over the plans of the devil. The Lord says, Whatsoever you tread upon, I will give to you. So you will tread upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing will hurt you. It is your feet that is the authority of God. When your feet is bewitched, the enemy can remotely tell you, manipulate you to wrong places, wrong churches, wrong ministries. Amen. Into demonic activities, wrong friends, because your feet has been oppressed. But when your feet is being led by the Spirit of God, you will begin to find the mountains of God. You will begin to find the true church of God. You begin to find the things that bring liberty into your life. So you're going to pray. Say every power, every wicked power, programmed into my feet to bring me into captivity. Die by fire. You wicked power, program against my feet, die by fire. Your power of delay, your power of lateness, attached to my feet. I say, break by fire. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Say this loud and clear. Say every evil assignment. Every evil plan. Against my life. Be exposed by the blood of Jesus. Lebra kadara baba kaza ponto rebebi abaradi. 
every plan of the wicked against my life let it be exposed let it be exposed let it be revealed let it be exposed Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share something very, very quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to share something very, very quick. Um, some of us are really lacking some level of discernment, and I want to open our eye and help us so that we'll be able to have a little level of uh, revelation of what the Lord wants us to do and how to discern not just our enemies but to understand um, who and who is fighting us. Hallelujah. Amen. You must understand that when in this life, if your eyes are blind, you also need discernment to discern who and who, who and who is assigned to you and who and who and how you should recognize your enemies amen hallelujah i'm going to be sharing some few facts amen hallelujah and then um amen please i beg i beg of you um there's going to be a lot of spiritual exercise that will be happening in um in, in what will be happening very soon the glory of god is going to be sweep sweep heavily mightily powerfully so let's get ready for what God is about to do. Amen. Are you guys ready? Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you all the glory. I thank you for your presence and I thank you, Father, for who you are. You are everything to us. I pray for a fresh fire. I pray for your fresh presence. I pray that, Lord, Holy Spirit, you make yourself manifest even as we uh, uh, partake of your word and commune with you today. Oh, God, Spirit of God, we come humbly before you right now. Father, baptize us with your fresh word, your fresh presence. Holy Spirit, open the doors, O oh God, in the realm of the Spirit, open the doors of heaven. Father, let fresh manna, fresh revelations be released into our spirit. O oh God, give us the grace, the abiding presence to share what you've given to us today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you release, clothe every man with your presence. Let the fear of the Lord brood over us now. Spirit of God, I pray that you illuminate your world with fresh fire. I pray that, Lord, you will make every heart tender. You will open every heart to understand, to receive from you. Bring clarity in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for your blood. I thank you, Father, for who you are. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Zade Madarabaka Sondebedebebebia. Just go ahead and begin just praying the Spirit. Go ahead and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everybody, I'm not hearing you. Rebebe, <laughs> 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless everyone watching us on Periscope, listening to us on the prayer line. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Designing your enemies. Hallelujah. How, how do you design your enemies? Glory to God. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you. My God. You know, man, this is this, this is an area that many, many have failed. This is an area many have uh, made huge mistakes. This is an area that many of us, we still need to grow and increase in the height of discernment. Hallelujah. Somebody said discernment. Discernment is the ability to see beyond the natural eyes. It's the ability to make choices that are divine from God. Amen. Solomon was presented with a choice. And a woman, let me, let me mute this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Solomon, uh, something happened to Solomon. Amen. Hallelujah. And Solomon, there was something about him that he had, God gave him wisdom. And you see, sometimes wisdom is majorly required to make great discernment um, in times of danger when cases are brought before you. And here we see the story of... <clears throat> A woman who was pregnant, uh, well, who delivered a baby, and the other one uh, who uh, also lost a baby. And at night, uh, somebody took a baby, and uh, <clears throat> and the other one took the baby, and they were about to sacrifice or kill the baby, and they brought it for Solomon. And Solomon, with great wisdom, was able to discern who was wrong and who was right. Hallelujah. And so many of us in this day and age will need a level of discernment. We need a level of great understanding to be able to read and interpret what the enemy has is planned against our lives. Amen. Um, <clears throat> the school of discernment is 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 is, the, is one of the most powerful gifts in the body of Christ. That even if you don't see, even if you don't see nothing, the best thing to have is making the right choices. Hallelujah. You can have all the wisdom you have, but if you don't have the discernment to know who you should hang out with. You will be surrounded with a lot of Judas instead of with a lot of Peters in your life. Amen. Uh, the opposite of Peter is Judas. The opposite of Judas is Peter. Hallelujah. Peter was one of the most loyal men. He was still yet. He had his own flaws. And he still yet. He needed to be prayed upon and to be strengthened. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, we see. In, hmm, let's open our Bible. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. Matthew 10 verse 22. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Mm. Hmm. Matthew 10 22 it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth in the hand shall be saved. Ye shall be hated of all men for my sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hmm. So once you receive Christ into your heart, once you come into the body of Christ. And you say, now you want to serve the Lord all the days of your life. Yet Jesus is not saying. He said, you'll be hated by all men. Not few men. All men. As long as what? You receive Christ into your heart. He said, prepare for re rejection. That is the first thing. He said, prepare what? Re re rejection. You're going to be rejected. And that is why you see Israel is surrounded by enemies. Every of his neighbors are all enemies wanting Jerusalem or Israel to make the greatest mistake. So they can wipe that nation out. But as small as it is, it's become the uh, cyber most powerful nation in the world. Many of the cell phones are designed by Israel, Israeli. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one. Hallelujah. Everyone will always have an enemy. Amen. You will always have an enemy. Hallelujah. You will always have an enemy. 
and that is one of the facts that you have to understand that everyone will be exposed to an enemy or the other as long as you want to make progress in life you have an enemy amen number two and your enemy is anyone who attempts to sabotage the assignment of god who that has for your life amen an enemy is anybody who on who has made himself to stop the plan of god in your life hallelujah galatians Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 5. Hmm. Let me go there quickly. Let's can we go there quickly? Galatians chapter 5. I'm gonna I'm gonna be just um Galatians chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Verse 7 to 9. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven spoils the whole lump. Hallelujah. If thy brother or thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or thy wife of thy bosom or thy friend, which is at thy own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go serve other gods, which thou shalt know, thou art our fathers. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall, shall die I pity him. Neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him, and thou shalt hand him. Put this. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. That, that, that's in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6. Amen. I want to say this to you quickly. Hallelujah. Many times, many times, every fish, your fish, the fishes in the aquarium, amen, every fish in their location always start with enemies. Now, Joseph began to succeed and he had a different vision and the moment god gave him a vision his enemies too was announced hallelujah and the birthing of his vision is when god began to separate him from his enemies he didn't realize it in the beginning now we see something that was very, very peculiar not just the father of joseph who loved joseph but father of joseph loved joseph so much not because of just joseph alone but because of the mother who passed away amen and so for that with the love of that he knew that joseph was a special child and he made a coat of a, a coat with many colors over Joseph. Now, the mother, um, the mother of Joseph, and also the the sibling, the the, the, the the sisters in law, whatever they call it, I mean, hallelujah, did not like Joseph. Now, the, as uh, Leah, Leah's kids or Leah's children, amen, hallelujah, um, they, they 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 hated Joseph because Joseph was not just the the real brother, amen, but he was a step brother. Hallelujah. And so there was a lot of conflict that started in the family as they began to grow. And you, 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 because you, as you begin to see this, you realize that something about Joseph, he began to reveal everything that happened about the details of the brothers and told it to the father. All right? I'm sure at a particular point, the father too was boasting about Joseph because he saw that this man was upright and he was smart and the Lord was raising him up. Hallelujah. But at some point, we could see that there was an envy, there was jealousy coming up. Now, many of us in our family, we raised up in our family, we begin to see all kinds of things happening. Whereby, many warfare that came into your life, is not just come because of you, because you've been young. But it came because of the envy of your parents, brothers, your parents, sisters, your parents, uncles, or your, you know, whoever it is. And as one, long as your father begins, or your mother begins to bust, based on your challenges based on your successes based on your accomplishment in school that is when enemy begins in your life amen enemies begin in your life not as a result of you created them but as a result of your parents creating them and so, so sometimes when joseph began to announce his vision amen he also created problems that's why sometimes it's, it's not so good to be too early amen to start telling our successes of our lives telling people about our daily activities how good we are how this and that because when we start practicing that or doing that, then suddenly uh, we cut that. You know, we limit that, we hinder that, we stop that. We stop that flow. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. So let us understand this. Your enemy is any person who resents your desire for increase and reward it brings. Every time you want to advance in life, every time you want to increase in life, every time you want to accomplish things. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, David experienced this from his older brother. Uh, uh, hallelujah Eliab his eldest brother heard when he spoke unto the man uh, uh, Eliab anger was kindled against David and he said 
Why camest thou, thou down hither with whom thou hast left? Those few sheep in the wilderness. I know thy pride and the haughtiness, amen, of thy heart. Amen. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. You can see this in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 28. Amen. 1 Samuel 17, verse 28. Amen. This young boy, uh, David, just went to the camp, brought some food. Amen. And again, they began to look at him on, on his negative. They never really appreciated it. So thank you for bringing the food. Amen. But they were rebuking him and said, look at your pride and look at your arrogance. Amen. Hallelujah. When God has called you for a particular purpose, you must understand that rejection is always the first key. Now, that the, the rejection has been a tool that the enemy have used to mess a lot of lives. Many people don't understand the spirit of rejection or the antiques of, re of or the mechanics of rejection. Amen. Rejection can draw all kinds of nonsense and make you feel very low and expose you to the enemy. Hallelujah. Rejection has made a lot of women sell their bodies for sex just to be accepted. Rejection of course a lot of women beautify themselves in essences, put all kinds of stuff on them. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejection sometimes too will also make a man submit to a Jezebel. Hallelujah. Rege Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rejection, amen, hallelujah, does a lot of things that is, I mean, rejection opens us up. When rejection comes, all of a sudden, you might have, you, it causes a man to compromise just to be accepted. Hallelujah. So we see that, for instance, the spirit of rejection, if David was not strong enough in the place of prayer, he could have compromised just to be accepted and be loved by his brothers. Same with Joseph would have compromised just to be accepted you must understand that rejection sometimes is good and rejection sometimes you must recognize when it's an enemy amen no matter how you pray you will still have to go through rejection especially if you are called by god and the hand of the lord and the finger of the lord is upon your life you will experience it one way or the other just like men experience uh, racism you must experience rejection at some point in your ministry and when you want to be serious with god God will take you to places. And you just being a woman, you will face rejection from the opposite race based on what you carry. And some of them will not be accepted yet. They will not accept you yet. Hallelujah. So that spirit, amen, hallelujah, must understand and know how to deal with that spirit. When it starts, when it starts, when you start seeing that coming against you, first thing you should understand that you have a call of God upon your life. Once you begin to face rejection, you must understand who is rejecting you. Who is who and who is rejecting you. Amen. Hallelujah. And if it's those who are not strong in the Lord, if it's those who, are, who have unclean spirit, if it's those who are need to be delivered, be happy. Brace up yourself because it's divine from the Lord. Now, when you have sincere, anointed helpers rejecting you, then it's time to worry. When you have people who have been sent from the Lord, who are now rejecting you for real, for real, something is wrong. You need to check it in the realm of the spirit. You don't look at them the way they respond to you or how they behave. Check it what? In the realm of the spirit. Because there is a voice and there is a power that is standing between you and them. Hallelujah. Once you are in the good camp, you begin to find your Elizabeth rejecting you. You begin to find your John the Baptist rejecting you. Something is wrong. There is an activity in the camp of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you must understand too that when people, when an enemy does not agree with you when an enemy does not agree with you they will always look for a fault with you that is when they say you're arrogant and you're prideful but when a friend comes into your life they look at your strength they will always talk about your strength amen i always say this um to a, to a woman before she gets married i said there are three things there are three things that you must check and you must understand that if you're going to marry somebody who is lasting you must understand there are three things that there are three things or three things you must look for Amen. The man must have must have a father nature. Amen. He must be a father in the realm of the spirit. That's number one. Number two, he must be a mentor. Number three, he must be a friend. Can I say it again? He must be a friend, mentor, and a father. A father is a provider, is a protector. Amen. A friend celebrates who you are. A friend is somebody you can confide with. A friend just covers you up. A friend loves you. Hallelujah. And the last one is an is a um, mentor. Amen. A mentor sees where you are going to. 
A mentor is not satisfied with your present state. A mentor pushes you forward. Hallelujah. Now, there are three, four, four, uh, the three kinds of friends that we need to have. Amen. Our secular friends. Amen. Friend that add value into our life. Friend that add value. Friend that... Um, <laughs> They are the three kind of friends friends that take from our lives and friends that come to destroy. Hallelujah. Friends that add value, friends that take from our lives, and friends that come to friends that come to destroy. We must recognize what kind of friends are in our life and what kind of roles they play in our lives. Jesus understood every one of them. He understood Nathaniel, Peter, um, um, John, he understood Andrew. James, he understood all of them, including Paul. Amen. And Judas. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four, your enemy is anyone, anyone unhappy over your progress. Anyone that is unhappy with your pro unhappy with your progress. Nehemiah faced this. I, I Ezra faced this. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, he, the, people hired counselors against them to frustrate their purposes. Hallelujah for straight up purposes amen hallelujah glory to god number five your enemy is anyone who increases or strengthens a personal weakness god is attempting to remove from your life hallelujah your enemy is anyone who increases or strengthens a personal weakness god is attempting to remove from your life <laughs> there was a weakness with samson and Nobody really knew about it, but until Delilah came into Samson's life, that weakness exploded. That is why sometimes when you see two people, a man and a woman, or a boy, if two of them have a kind of weakness, same weakness, for instance, drunkenness, they like to drink, one of them likes to drink, and has been meeting somebody that doesn't drink, his weakness or her weakness will be curtailed. But the moment he meets the same person that drinks like him, then there will be dysfunctionality, heavy dysfunctionality in the home. And so, so many people, they are drawn to each other's weaknesses. Many people are drawn to each other's weaknesses. But when the weaknesses come, they see that it, instead of helping, it breaks both of them. Hallelujah breaks them so whatever weakness you must understand and my hallelujah and sometimes the enemy will turn it against you and use it against you hallelujah glory to glory to god number six your enemy is anyone that attempts to kill the faith that is birthing within you and uh, your enemy hallelujah thank you lord an enemy is anyone that is has been assigned to abort your dream your calling to frustrate it in your life that is an enemy your any your 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 when you have a friend, they push you forward, they advance you, they, they help you, they, they, they pray for you, they charge you up, they're on fire. Amen. They don't compete. They don't compete. When, when, you, when you are back in school, back in our school those days, we were so hungry for the Lord, so consumed by His hunger. Many of us, we pray, 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 pray. And even when the pastor says, In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, we don't stop because our brother is still praying. And it became a competition. Not, not. I will use. I won't use the word competition. It became a challenge. You know, anything that is a challenge is good. But when it's competition, then you are jealousy sets in. You know, you want the other person to stop so you can take the crown and the glory. Amen. But in this in this scenario, um, we realize that when the other one was praying, they were also iron sharpening iron. So we were, we were advancing because. The other person will not give up in prayer, and we too will not give up in prayer. So we are extending the prayer time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I bless God for many of you that are listening to me right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm. Amen. Number seven. Your enemy is anyone who would rather discuss your past than your future. Your enemy is anyone that would rather what? Discuss your past. Amen. The enemy keeps rehearsing your mistakes. We never really say, we, 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 we cut out of subtract your successes and every time you have achieved something in life when your enemy hears about it it tingles in their ear and they want to dampen it they want to slam on it they want to they want to become a pharisee and speak negative about your future and where you're going about when you're going to hallelujah if they speak anything there is no hope in the words they say it's more of like destructive criticism hallelujah 
Amen. Look at this scenario of um, the woman that was caught in adultery. Many of them came. They brought her and they began to contemplate, began to talk about her past. Amen. And they were trying to stone her, rebuke her, to judge her what she has done. But Jesus looked at her and says, where are, you, where, are you, where, where are your attackers? Amen. Where are they? Say they are gone. I said, okay, neither do I condemn you. Hallelujah. He saw that in his spirit and he rescued her and delivered her. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, when you recognize an enemy, an enemy is anyone. Hmm? An enemy is anyone who attacks the weak around you. Hallelujah. You might have like sheep, folks. You might have people around your life. You might have people in the rest. And this enemy just comes and begins to scatter, begin to intrude, and begin to do everything just to frustrate you. That's an enemy. You're not, you're not sent from the Lord. If you begin to do that, you've crossed the line. You've crossed the line. You don't take your personal life into ministry and begin to... I remember a lady back in Dallas had this ministry and a guy visited the church for the first time and this lady who is a prophetess, powerful prophetess, just prophesies, suddenly tried to enter a car and leave but the car could not start. And so this called his brother and said, please help me start my car. The guy did some things, walked on the car, and the car started. Well, they exchanged numbers, and that's how it started. Three months later, this woman was so anointed, she became pregnant. Pregnant to the extent that she had to leave ministry. Hallelujah. For me, I was just, to, for me, that, that incident really shocked me. I was just like, wow, what is this? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when you see such things, you realize that you know what? We need to be very, very careful. Now that woman lost lost a person. Another woman, another woman, same thing. Because there were few men in the church. There were not much men in the church. And um this woman, or there were ladies in the church, and there was this guy who just visited the church. She visited the church for the first time. And the woman of God said, Oh, can you come forward and say hello to the people? This guy came and said hello to the people, and before you know it, one lady, very anointed, took interest on this guy. Said, "Let me get your number." And before you know it, they start sleeping around, and this woman lost the glory of the fire. You must always protect your sheep. You must always pray, not during the service in the church, but in your private time, asking God to watch over the sheep, because wrong words, wrong words can come in. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? There's a lot of vicious attacks that the enemy is releasing now. I sit back and I relax. Whether I pray or I don't pray, whoever is made himself an enemy, whoever is divorcing information to the enemy, whoever is collaborating with the enemy, the judgment of God comes upon them. Whether you don't know, whether you know, the Lord, you by discernment, you will know where God is really revealing. And you know, of course, we may not understand all the information. We may not gather all the information to know what's really going on. But there were people that would spoke to David who were in Saul's camp. Would come to David, befriend David, go back with the information to Saul. They, David is here. David is here. David is here. You think God will let them go free? No. God was, God judges those people who were enemies to David. <clears throat> in, in these guys. Hallelujah. Your enemy, like we discussed already, your enemy is sometimes those of your own household. Hallelujah. Matthew 10, 36. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. Hallelujah. Your enemy sometimes comes from your own household. Hallelujah. And those ones are familiar spirits because they've been with you for a while. Hallelujah. One of the things that we understand is that your enemies should not be feared. 
I know of a sister who lives with her mother and her father, and they don't want her to go to church. They don't really go to church that much, but they don't want her to go to church. They just want to stop her and let her stay at home. The lady is over 27 years old, but the parents just make some serious decisions. Uh, what do you say about that when you have to honor your mother and your father? There is an enemy behind it that is influencing such people. Hallelujah. Your enemy should not be feared. Hallelujah. Your enemy should not be feared. One of the things is that once an enemy is in your life, they always, the devil always gives them this power of influence. They will come and intimidate you. Amen. And it seems like you want to believe them. But you must stay on your ground. You must stay on your word. And you must believe God rather than man. And you must uh, have it a, a sure boldness. Amen. Hmm. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. Second Thessalonians. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Zela Prosta Vandalist. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Amen. Verses 2. I read from verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that ye may be delivered from all unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at what it says. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Hallelujah. When the word of God comes, there can be hindrances, there can be the Bible says, Amen, Hallelujah. Paul says, There is a great and effectual door, but there are what there are many adversaries. Great and effectual door, but there are many adversaries. So many adversaries. For, so it means that for every success, for every open door, an enemy comes with it. Great enemies. And we need to tackle them in prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. The enemy spites is, is always after against sources and always at all costs want to stop sources. But if you pursue the will of the Lord, God will rescue you away from the rage of the devil. When you make up your mind in this season, that come what may, nobody can stop me. Nobody can stop my vehicle, my speed in destiny. Do you know that no matter what anybody does, if you put your two legs down and say nobody will stop you, nobody will stop you. This October, remember the prophecy. Some serious things will happen. Your enemies will come bowing before you. <laughs> oh boy. There is always a battle. But I know that you will win the war. Eventually. Amen. When a man is yet to pray or to cry out to God and he's just relaxing. Huh? I love the movie. Um, can't remember the name. This man was relaxing, drinking coffee. And he had bad people shooting outside and they were coming. They began to shoot. And they, and they were, you know, and so his son was so threatened. He said, Dad, 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 we're in trouble. We're in trouble right now. We're right now. Come, come, come. Dad, Dad said, don't worry, eat your food. They, they won't touch us. And when he was done eating the food, as these guys were around, it, they didn't know that the father had set traps all over. A grenade. And so the moment they stepped on the trap, they were, <laughs> oh boy, explosion took place all over. And many of them died. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Every time you see an enemy, if you focus more on them, you will lose your focus with God. The more you see your enemies, the more you visualize your angels all around you. If you can, hallelujah, if while the enemy is encroaching towards you and you can be like Elijah, they that with us and more than a dozer against us, in Psalm 91, hallelujah, you can remember what it says, hallelujah, a thousand shall be at the right hand, a thousand shall be there. Listen to me, they will come against you, but you will see them scatter. 
you visualize and you start laughing. If you can overcome your fear, listen to me, your enemy cannot overcome you. You must be somebody that intimidates your enemy. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And every time you are in difficulty and you're wondering where, what's going on, many of us don't interact with the Holy Spirit. And because the Bible says if we begin to ask of the Holy Spirit and ask us as the Holy Spirit to give us revelation, it will open our eye gates. God will begin to show us what is really happening. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will begin to show us, He will begin to speak to us and reveal to us exactly what is really happening. Many of us don't ask the Holy Spirit. We don't communicate with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, who is my enemy? Show me what is about to happen. How why is this happening to me? Reveal it to me. You might see your brother, Christian brother in your dream attacking you. Lord, is he really the one? Speak to me. And as you begin to ask these questions, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal. Will begin to speak to you in a very, very powerful way. You will be shocked. You, you might not open your ear gate because your ear gate is not yet open. Now, if the Holy Spirit will communicate with you and he sees that flesh has covered your ear gates, what does he do? Then he nudges somebody close to you to call you on the phone. And they call you and all oh, they're just talking and you they don't know you commune or ask God they, they ask the Holy Spirit a question. So as they are talking, all of a sudden they reveal your answers and they begin to tell you what you've prayed on. You know, I don't think that person, I really think something about that person. And once they start saying this, you're like, oh, how does she know? I didn't tell her anything confirmation confirmation so the holy spirit speaks to individuals sometimes you can turn a tv on and right there you get your answers there sometimes you can go on facebook social media and right there somebody posts something that you need fear not what you've lost is about to come and you're like whoa this is god because every time god speaks god speaks to rama you see this world is is always a logos the word of the Lord is Logos. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, it means nothing. It's just a knowledge. Ignostos. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just knowledge. But when the God begins to speak through his word, this rema, this rema grace that comes and it quickens you. He say, I spoke and I was strengthened. Every time you hear God's word from the Lord for you, there is a strength that comes upon you. It's like an awakening. Like, whoa, what, what happened? Hallelujah. Amen. Your enemy is often designed ahead of time by your mentor. Never think you watch the animal kingdom. The animals who fall victim to lions never see the lion early. But there are other people around that see the lions before that one. Some of us, I always say this to myself. I know something you don't know. And you know something I don't know. You know something I don't know. And I know something that sometimes you don't know. Hallelujah. It's not everything I know. But there's some certain things that God doesn't allow us, everyone to know. If you study the Bible too, it says I've given you apostles, prophets, amen, evangelists, teachers, pastors, for the what? The perfecting of the saints. Not everything, if you ask same questions to a teacher, same questions to the evangelist and prophets and apostles, they all have same resp uh, different responses. Why? Because God is too big. If you go to heaven, angels have some similar answers, but also diverse answers and revelations. Why? Because this, this, in every side of God, there's a revelation to catch. Hallelujah. There is a good side of God and there is a bad side. Glory to God. Amen. Hmm. So, in life, we need our mentors. We need fathers. We need fathers. I always say this. I said, the man that is on the seventh floor 
sees differently from the man that is on the first floor of a building. You might look outside and all you see is a lake. But the man on, this, on the seventh floor sees a park. He sees an airport. He sees far, far distance. So those who have gone ahead of you, Elizabeth, Mary was sent to Elizabeth's house to learn, to hear from the Holy Spirit because Elizabeth was much older than Mary. Mary was still young. And so Mary was panicking. Mary did not have a mother figure. Amen. And so Mary needed a, a spiritual mother figure to be able to encourage Mary because Elizabeth also had a baby now, a prophetic baby. Hallelujah. A prophetic baby. And instructions was given to the mother, don't eat anything or clean. So that revelation that was given to um, 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 Elizabeth was needed by Mary. Hallelujah. And this was a revelation. So many of, many of us, we need to uh, God will always connect us with people who uh, have gone ahead of us in, 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 in the careers, in our private life, in the family, in the ministry. Hallelujah. And we need to just humble ourselves. I mean, some of us are not, we're not humble enough to teach. We always want to teach, teach, teach. We need to learn and receive. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, we need to develop that, that habit of just receiving and receiving ask questions ask questions everybody likes to want to teach talk teach talk teach talk they want to say what they know so <laughs> you must be slow to speak and amen hallelujah slow to speak and quick to what answer you must be a good learner you must be a learner learner from everyone you must know how to learn from a baby i've always said it's when you talk to a fool or a person younger than you Make sure you pick at least five points that are very important. When you talk to your enemy, make sure you at least take down three things that are the most important things. If I ask you, can you receive something special? Can you receive knowledge from an idiot or from a fool? Are you able to document three things that are very important? Some of us don't listen. We are so eager to tell another what we know, what we've accomplished. But the true gauge of humility is to see everybody stronger than you or to see strength in everyone. Amen. When you see strength in everyone, then once they sit down, Jesus, the Bible says, he, as he sat down, he went and began to ask philosophers, doctors, questions. He wasn't talking about himself. He was asking questions. The time was coming, he was going to speak. Amen. But that time, God has not given him the unction, the ability to preach. God just gave him the unction to learn from others. So while everybody was speaking, they were just listening, listening, asking questions, asking these questions. Let me tell you something. Questions. Without questions, you can't get an answer. If you don't ask God questions, you might as well forget it. The God will not give you an answer. Only if he loves you. When you ask God questions, maybe today, maybe next week he'll give you an answer. Every time you get an answer, it's because you've asked God a question. When you ask people questions, God, authorize, you are authorizing God to give you an answer because questions birth humility. People who are humble always ask questions. Like they say, a man who is arrogant is a man that will drive for two hours without non-stop. Non and won't stop to ask for directions because he feels like he knows it too much. Amen. You must always, when I go to stores sometimes and I want to go buy some nice, nice suits, and I get very confused. I ask, and there are some nice shoes too that I love. And uh, when I go and I see this uh, collections of shoes and clothes and whatever, I ask the guy who is selling it, I say, hey, listen, which is the best shirt I could wear among these three? And, and sometimes when my dad is with me, my dad is like, <laughs> says, son, <laughs> don't try this. Don't try this in your country. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when I ask them, they give me their best opinion. Amen. And usually 90% of the time, they're right. Where's the best place to go here? Where is the, you, know, you must ask questions. Just take a deep breath and just, it won't take nothing from you. Some of us want to always let people know that we are so special. 
Don't do that to ourselves. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus was a mentor to Peter. And Jesus said to Peter, he says, <clears throat> Lord, and the Lord said to Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may swift you as with. But I have prayed for you, and I faith feel not. Listen to me. Every time you have somebody who prays for you all the time, spends time praying for you, usually God will give them a revelation about you. God, either God will give them revelation or inspiration or a word from the from the word from the Bible about you. A word of counsel about you. If you doubt what they are saying, you might face the consequences. And I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about the very people that prays for you. You might give you an advice, but you must always know to find you it. You see, people advise me all the time. I must know how to stand on the ground whereby they don't cross the line of familiarity. Let them stay within the, within, within the place whereby God is visiting them and speaking through them. God is using them. And I'm also examining my heart and the ability to receive from them. You know, because when you are humble, the true nature of a humble person is that he's teachable. He easily receives correction. Amen. And pride is, is that you can't tell them anything, you can't correct them. So if somebody's trying to correct me and is 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 there's pride inside of my heart, I can't receive it. I just block them totally. That's pride. So why they're giving me a correction? I have to evaluate my heart. Lord, where am I in the spirit? And so you see some people they're not good in that. You know, easily they fall for it. Hallelujah. Easily. Once once somebody starts telling them about who they really are. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's, it's too much. They can't handle it. So, I've always, one thing I've said about it is that if you want to operate in a prophetic office, if you want to be a prophet or a prophetess, make sure one of the things you need to work on, as much as God will give you powerful, strong messages to the people, please develop your inner, your inner tenacity. To hear strong messages. Develop yourself to receive strong messages. Not when somebody's correcting you, you hang up the phone. No. If you can receive strong messages, you're also qualified to give strong messages. Hallelujah. Soldiers, the Navy, the Navy SEAL. They've been taught one thing. The greatest training that has been given to them is the, the training of survival. If you can survive when you have been captured through the brutal experiences to keep it, keep a secret, then, then you are well trained. There are many people that will go through the exercises of jumping and swimming and all that stuff, and they're good at it. But when it comes to the torture exercise, they fail it. If you want to be a prophet of the Lord, I'm not talking about the evangelist or whatever, I'm talking about a prophet of the Lord. You must know how to receive correction from anyone because God can use anyone. We studied the Bible, Balaam was on a donkey. He was ready to, he can rebuke, correct? When God began to use a donkey to correct him, he would not even listen. And many of us are falling into that trap. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. What destroys... Let me tell you something. Fasting. If you see that the enemy, your enemy is surviving against you, if you see that your enemy is being victorious over your life, if you see your enemy gaining advantage over you, what is the first thing to do? Deal and battle amen be victorious if you know that your enemy is advancing struggling overcoming being victorious over your life what is the first thing to do run into a place of fasting if you've done everything you've
prayed, you fasted, and you prayed, you saw the face of God, you prayed, 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 you worshipped, the enemy is still advancing against you. you. Go to your secret place, lock up yourself in God, and begin to fast. You will see how the Lord will begin to rock heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Your enemy is usually a natural or necessary friend in your life. God places your enemy to push you forward. God usually will place your enemy to mature you. Without enemies in our life, some of us will not understand the strategies of warfare. What are the things to do when fasting? Hallelujah. Basically, fasting is a sacrifice. Fasting is total abstinence. Uh, fasting is a bodily sacrifice that you do to attain the attention of God. Hallelujah. So, for instance, when I started my fast, or when my mother started fast, uh, my mother passed away in 98, but when my mom was alive, she was the one that taught me how to pray. She will lock the kitchen, and by 12 o'clock, we need to fast. And by 12 o'clock, after 12, then we can eat. And my goodness, I, that didn't go well with me. Amen. And uh, she will do. Hallelujah. She will, uh, thank you. She will do everything, everything to keep us on the fast. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes I will get upset and falls around, but she will give us chapters to read in the Bible, book of Psalms. But it helped me. Now I'm looking back, I'm like, wow. I never knew that God would require a lot from me. The more you fast, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 p.m., um, juice, all day fast, on water, any fast that you do, sometimes you might choose not to talk to anybody for one day. That is a fast. Sometimes you might choose not to watch television the whole week. That is a fast. Sometimes you might choose not to sleep on your comfortable bed and just lie down on your back on the ground. That was what God told Ezekiel. Ezekiel lay down on the right side, on his, on his side. He was not allowed to sleep comfortably. That is a fast. Sometimes people fast without meat um, that they love. That is also a fast. Hallelujah. There are different ways the way that God rewards our fast. Remember this, that the more you're fasting, angels are there grading your attitude, grading how you're performing, grading um, how you're telling, informing everybody that you're fasting. Because by telling people how you fast, your, your reward, God is rewarding you too. If you keep everything in the secret, there's also a reward for it. If you choose to isolate yourself totally from humans, and just God, and turn off your phone totally, there's also a great reward for that. Hallelujah. So everything comes with a sacrifice. Now, back in the days, the Old Testament, when they go in the fast, some of them just go to the mountain, you don't find them. Elijah was an expert. When he's fasting, he doesn't mingle with people. He goes and isolates himself in the mountain of the Lord. And so, fasting is a very, is, is a very, very powerful tool. I've seen, the, I've seen the effect of it in my life. Um... And the most powerful one is when you drink no water, no food, and no television, no internet, no Facebook, uh, no communication, just your phone is dead. My God, I'm telling you, there is something that happens with your ear gate. If you don't hear from humans for five days consistently, non-stop, if the voice of man has been is shut away from you for at least five days, eternity, the voice of eternity will be clearer, sharper than you think. You can listen to sermons. It will build your faith. It will build your faith. Um, um, faith coming by hearing, by hearing by the word of the Lord. So the more you place some messages, it will build your faith. Hallelujah. Uh, worship it will increase your focus your hunger hallelujah in fasting i realized that 
it that is when you are able to read your word. I mean, I mean, when I do my forty days, I finish, you know, Genesis and I finish a lot of books. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. You see me? I touch my phone. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, <clears throat> when you're, if you're fasting, you must make sure you must have some prayers. Hallelujah. I want to say this, that when you're fasting, it's the time to engage into serious prayers. And the first prayers you want to pray is the book of Psalms. Take the book of Psalms and begin to re re recite it to yourself. Take the book of Psalms and say it as prayers to yourself, prayer points to yourself. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, his is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom will I trust. Surely shall deliver thee from the snare of the follower and from the noisome pestilence. Amen. So you begin to read. A thousand shall fall at that side. You just begin to recite. You go ahead and recite. And by the time you are done, you begin, you will feel some power entering you. You will feel some, whew, you will feel it. Now, in fasting, the more you feel weaker, the more you are weaker, it's not the time to give up. It's the more you are actually strong in God. People don't know that. When you feel like you're very weak, it's the time you're actually close to heaven. If you can open your mouth and begin to pray there, in your weakness and begin to pray in tongues, you will see angels who come and strengthen you. Hallelujah. The most deadliest authority and power uh, when to deal with your enemy. Don't deal with your enemy after you break your fast. Don't wait to finish your fasting before you now pray. Then you, that's a waste of time. In the midst of your fasting, if you open your mouth, especially the second day, and you start talking to to God, hmm, woe betide the enemy that has made an enemy enemy against you, because the enemy will see something, see fire. And hallelujah. Amen. Hmm. Satan is your internal enemy. And that is one of the things we see. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 12. Hmm. One of the things you must understand that you cannot defeat your enemy in your own strength. Um, my mentor always says, never respond to your enemy until you have been in God's presence. Never respond to your enemy until you have been in God's presence. Hallelujah. Never speak or and give them a word. Because in God's presence, everything that you say, you are being covered. Even the words that you say are covered with God's blood. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. You must understand according to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 11. It says what? <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, <clears throat> Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Always, before you go to bed, always empower yourself in prayer. Always fortify yourself. At least speak in tongues for at least 30 minutes. And what you are doing is that you are surrounding yourself. You are being building a wall of fire around about you, around your mind. Many of us go to bed weak. Many of us don't know that the enemy has studied us. And when the enemy sees that, you always sleep with angels around you. What he first do is to use your kids to interrupt your joy. He will use people to make you angry. He will use all kinds of things just to offend you. And once you get so offended, you let down your guard. <clears throat> In the midst of that frustration, many people now go to bed. They just go to bed because they're tired of the mess. They don't know now that the enemy has now opened the door. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. God bless you. You just, okay, all right. I'll give you my number, okay? You call me. You call me. Hallelujah. Somebody, you have my number there. If you can help me post it, that would be good. Uh, on, on, on Facebook. On WhatsApp. On prayer, prayer school, sorry. Uh-huh. Yeah, there you go. My number is 612-701-593. Thank you, my sister. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Overcoming your enemies, it is a key to reward. Now listen to me. 
as long as you begin to build, fortify yourselves with the armor of God. Amen. When you begin to build yourself with the armor of God, hallelujah, you must build, you must understand the antics of the devil. Study your enemy. Hallelujah. We're in Minnesota. We're in Minnesota. And everyone is spread about. Oh, you're in Dubai. Wow. Mm, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are in America. Amen. So, every for every enemy that you overcome, there is always a reward. Hallelujah. For every enemy that you overcome, God has always crowned you. Remember this, your enemy will be sent to distract you, to delay you, to stop you, to seduce you from the mission that God has given to you. Every time you see an enemy, always see a crown. You can't, don't, if you run away from your enemy, <laughs> you can resist your enemy, he will flee. But to run away, you allow the enemy to pursue you. Hallelujah. And the best... <clears throat> defense is offense against your enemies hallelujah so david saw goliath and he was about to confront goliath and they were saying look at your pride but they told him there's a reward there's a reward there's a reward and when he got down goliath he was able to get a a wife Amen. Saul's daughter. And God began to reward him and anoint him. The spoils of war must always remain your focus, be your focus. The reason why men go to war is to take possession. Is to take back that which was captured from their lives. Amen. And on this prayer line, you must understand that God will always crown you with grace. God will always crown you with power, with the anointing of the Lord, to do one thing, to recover back the treasures of, of, of darkness, to take back the lands that the enemy has stolen from your life. Hallelujah. This was why Joshua was anointed. Hallelujah. This was why David was anointed. All everyone that, um, that began to fight in the Bible was to take back the blessings of the Lord from the hand of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Glory to God. Twenty-four. You will always have a warfare companion during every battle with your enemy. Hallelujah. You will always have a warfare companion during every battle with your enemy. Every time God wants to take you to a season of elevation, you must make sure you will always bring somebody before you to help you. Jesus did not walk alone. He was very weak, he was about to die. But God brought somebody to help him carry the cross. Just Jesus would get a temporary break. All the three wise men, friends of Job, came and they saw Job's situation. All of them said different things about Job. There was only one young boy that caught the revelation what really happened everybody jesus wanted his disciples to pray with him tarry with me for at least one hour everyone was sleeping except john the beloved john the beloved was awake people say what are you talking about pastor are you sure yes he was awake <laughs> john the beloved was awake in gethsemane Hallelujah. If you're following us in a prayer line, you will know that, that he, he's been following us. Hallelujah. Mighty God. What a mighty God. Glorious God. In the name of Jesus. I bless God. Hallelujah. Hmm. You will always have a warfare companion during every battle. Amen. A man that will walk with you, stand with you. An enemy always we always reveal God's love in your life. An enemy will always provoke God to reveal himself in your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Now, why is prayer needed? Why is prayer essential? 
prayer is so powerful that it gives us essential wisdom in knowing how to overcome our enemies. It is in the secret place that God gives you divine strategies to overcome your enemies. Never, when every time you come to your, your in your place of prayer, your secret place, this is where you become vulnerable before God. This is where God sees your humility. Without your secret place, God sees that you want to rely on your own strength. But in the secret place, that is where God sees that, okay, it depends on me. It depends on me. And that's all, that's all the main, main reasons why the Lord has left our enemies in our life. Because our enemies chases us back to God. It breaks that spirit of independence. One way or the other, we need God. We need God. We need God. Hallelujah. One of the scriptures that I read, that I said, uh, I, I, I read and I shook my head. I said, who wrote this verse? Who really wrote this verse? Can I go there? Can we go there? And I say this before we go. It's almost time before we go. Hallelujah. Independent spirit is a nasty spirit. In Genesis chapter... Genesis... Okay, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Let's read, that, let's read that scripture. Very funny scripture. I read it and I was like, what is this? Hallelujah. Already I was really shocked by it. Genesis chapter 2. I read from verse 15. And the Lord, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me eat. Amen. And God is saying it's not good for a man to live alone. Now, after he said this, now look at the mistake that Adam said. Verse 22 in Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto Adam. Now remember this. Whatsoever Adam said, God obeyed. Whatever name God gave, Adam gave, God honored. De and look at what it says. And Adam said, verse 23, Adam said, This is now the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman, because she was taken out of man. Now in the next verse is what is what is, is where I got confused about. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Are you serious? Is Adam talking about the future? Because Adam is referring to God. Therefore a man and a woman shall leave his wife, leave his father and his mother. Because Adam did not have a mother. Adam did not have a father except Jehovah. So who is Adam referring to in this scripture? Somebody, somebody respond to me on Periscope. Praise God. Anybody on Periscope, type it. Who is Adam referring to? In verse 23. He says, and Adam said, This is not the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. It shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. I shall claim to his own wife. So he, in that statement, we could tell, we could see that it was denied. It was actually prophesying his independence. It was after that statement, you could see the fall and the temptation of Adam, the fall of Eve. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife? They shall become one flesh. Nobody's communicating with me. Okay. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than the other beast of the field, which the Lord God had commanded. And he said unto the woman, 
as he as god said ye shall not eat of any tree of the garden of eden so <clears throat> hallelujah amen that's it it was his father and his mother so the moment adam said made that statement therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to he separated the covering it's funny that when we look at this and shortly after that the fall came that independent spirit is not good you will think that adam will say lord thank you for providing this woman for me lord thank you for creating this woman but instead it was a different statement Can you imagine you just blessed your child with a Mercedes Benz and then your child says, Yes, now shall a man cleave to the Mercedes Benz and they shall leave their mother and their father. How would you feel? You're going to be like, What? Let me take back my Mercedes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. But that was what Adam said. And their independence was created and the enemy walked in. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We must be careful of our words, what we speak. Amen. We must be careful of our, about our words. Hallelujah. You know, I, I <clears throat> thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Every time your enemy fights against you, every time your enemy makes himself an enemy towards you, trust me, God is on the throne. When an enemy begins to fight you, when an enemy begins to oppose you, he has made himself an enemy to God. Just relax. God got your back. Just be obedient and let the call of God speak for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Focus on the call because the oil will always fight for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I believe that some of you have been blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please keep us in your prayers. I'll keep you in a prayer. Amen. And the Lord will begin to release more revelations more revelations what if the enemy is your husband before the enemy became your husband an enemy was trying to influence your husband hallelujah and um, you must always pray remember this G judas loved jesus but but the enemy influenced judas and when the enemy influenced judas Jesus looked at Jesus and said, whatever you go do, go do it quickly. And Jesus eventually tried to repent and return the money. But he realized it was too late. Your money perished with it. It was too late. Too late. Too late. Amen. People can be influenced against you. Family can be influenced against you. Mm. And you will see the reaction of the Lord fight for you. Amen. Um, pray. Continually pray for your husband. Continually pray for your spouse. Continually pray for your children. If you don't pray for them, the enemy can use them. Pray for your members. Pray for your leaders. Jesus prayed for Peter because he knew that he had imparted to Peter. The only place in the Bible where we, the Bible we saw Peter received the ministry from the Lord. You know? And from that moment, he received the ministry from the Lord. Hallelujah. From that time we saw the ministry of the Lord, we see that Peter was identified by the devil. After Jesus prophesied to him, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Then the devil too was trying to use Peter to prevail. You cannot die on the cross. And Jesus quietly said, looked at it, said, Satan, get it behind me. Amen. Anybody you don't pray for can be easily influenced by the enemy, including your supervisor, including those that love you. You know, in marriages, we see that a lot of women, a lot of men, we focus too much on the person we're speaking to we don't focus on the enemy behind the scenes there's always an enemy behind the scenes creating confusion always an enemy behind the scenes hardening the heart of men you must bind that spirit no every devil wants every marriage to crumble i don't see no devil say oh i want the marriage to succeed except the marriage is set up by the devil himself hallelujah be a man of prayer cover your children Cover everything you do. Cover the car you do. You drive with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You must do that. And I thank God that in this ministry, if the Lord brings you to this ministry, something happens in your life. 
there is a level of anointing the spirit of prayer and grace that the lord releases upon you um, and the mantle of deliverance is upon this ministry so every time you come you make yourself available now remember this now the bible says what i have provided you what apostles teachers uh, evangelists prophets for what the perfecting of the saints so you can be perfected with the gift of every ministry of what they carry if you submit to a ministry that is prophetic that is apostolic that is territorial breaker that has a breaker anointing that anointing will come upon you if you submit to a ministry that has a teaching anointing evangelistic anointing that anointing will come upon you whatever anointing and also too if you commit to a ministry that struggles and is limited in in whatever they do they can be strong in worship but they are weak in prayer that can expose you hallelujah so you knowing how to perfect your life perfect your ministry is, is, is needed in this entire i pray for you that god will give you great wisdom i pray for you that god will give you great that god will insulate you from your enemies that every judas in your life that the judases in your life will fulfill the will of god in your life when god allows judas in your life god allows judas to mature you in the love of god god sends judas in your life amen for certain reasons you will not die in the hands of judas hallelujah jesus came to die all right but when god allows judas in your ministry is to make you to rely to god now for instance i could set up a ministry i could pick people anyhow and just say okay can you help me can you help me and when i do that something happens if i'm not prayerful if i'm not on fire those people now that i've appointed the devil can use them against me just like he was trying to use peter because jesus appointed peter and then judas he appointed also too but it wasn't announced they appointed judas to take care of the money but the devil influenced judas Peter, he took Peter. He was trying to influence Peter. Why? Because Peter knew so much secrets of Jesus. Personal secrets. So that child that you love in your house, that child that you love so much, that is your Joseph. Mothers, fathers, if you listen to me, the son or the girl that you love so much passionately, pray for that girl, pray for that woman. If you don't pray for them, that is what happened to Joseph. Joseph went through so much afflictions, so much problems. The father was not aware of it. But thank God, God lifted Joseph. Hallelujah. We must begin to pray for everyone that is connected to us and those we truly love in the ministry. Because the devil will always, if the devil cannot attack us, he will go after those we truly love. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God Almighty. I pray that God will keep you. I pray that God will strengthen you and fortify you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Beautiful Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I bless God for everyone that has died in today. Hallelujah. I must let everyone go. Love you guys. Amen. Thank you so much. You could see the number again. It's 952 955 9454. The prayer line number. Amen. And my number is 612 701 5983. Amen. I want you to be blessed and have a good day. Love you guys now. Bye-bye. See you guys. Amen. Are you guys blessed? Amen. 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 Well, well, God bless you guys now. Have fun now. We'll see you again. All right? God bless everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Have a blessed day. Blessings now. Yeah.